The coffin refused to be buried, and then the priest opened it, leaving everyone shocked. The attendees recently got the shock of a lifetime when a person on the verge of being buried suddenly, for a pre sama funeral, which is a weekly routine. Of course, he'd rather do a wedding ceremony, but a funeral is part of his duty, so today he is also conducting a funeral. A young, beautiful woman died in a traffic accident, and today is her service. The church is packed as John, the priest, is busy blessing the young woman in the open casket. However, he notices something striking on her body, and priest John completely freezes up when he sees it. He knew he had not been allowed to open the casket, as per the parents' request, and now he understood why. When he looks over his shoulder, he can see the shocked faces of Mary's parents. Sam has the casket closed again and finishes up the ceremony, but he cannot just let the casket be buried. He goes into the back to get his phone and calls the police. He needs them to see it right away. However, Mary's parents have different ideas. What detail did Sam notice in the casket? Why did his parents react, and what was the secret they kept hiding about their daughter's death? The death of little Mary was devastating news for the small town in rural Arkansas, and nobody expected something like this to happen. As Mary's parents told the press, her death had been caused by a car accident, and most shocking of all was the fact that the driver didn't stop the vehicle to help the girl. Unfortunately, there were no witnesses at the scene of the accident, making it very difficult to find out who was responsible. There was overwhelming sympathy from the town for the grieving family. The funeral was scheduled to take place in two days, and Mary's family wanted to prepare a nice ceremony to say a proper goodbye. But that day, perhaps more details would be revealed about the car accident, raising many questions. Mary's parents and every other citizen in this small town were very religious. Therefore, the funeral ceremony would take place in the local church, a source of pride for the town. Everyone was deeply saddened by this car accident and mourning the untimely death of a little girl. The family decided that everyone deserved a chance to say a proper goodbye to the little girl. On the day of the funeral, the church was full of people. Mary lay at the foot of the altar in a closed casket, as her parents had requested. The atmosphere was mournful, as nobody expected such a tragic accident to occur in the small town. The priest, Sam, led the ceremony. He was an old man, and he was asked to bless the young girl before everyone could walk by the casket. But he couldn't do this when the lid was closed, so he decided to open the casket. After a while, something very unexpected happened. The priest decided to open the casket, despite the parents' request. However, it was too late for the parents to stop him. When the priest laid his eyes on the young girl in the casket, he noticed a detail that made him freeze in the middle of his blessing. Pre Sam tried to quickly regain his composure and finish the blessing before closing up the casket again. He didn't know exactly how to react to what he had just seen inside the casket. When he turned around, Mary's parents were looking at him with pure fear in their eyes. Why did they hide it from everyone? Sam knew for sure that he didn't want to make the situation seem weirder than it already was. So he invited the guests to walk by row past the casket and say their goodbyes. But he decided not to stay for this. He didn't know how to react to the situation or what to tell the parents. Before leaving the church, the priest asked his two assistants to ensure that the process ran smoothly and to make sure they closed the casket again under any circumstances, not even allowing Mary's parents to open it. Meanwhile, Sam went into the back room of the church to get his phone. He knew he needed to alert the police to investigate what had happened. They needed to come and check it out before Mary was buried in the ground. This was the weirdest thing that had ever happened to him in all his years. While the priest was being connected to the police department, Mary's parents, terrified, walked into the back room and closed the door behind them. Obviously, they didn't want anybody else to witness this. They started bargaining with the priest, pleading with him not to call the police or tell anyone about what they had seen in the casket. At that moment, the priest was afraid for his life and his health. When the call finally connected to the police department, the priest had no doubts about what he had to do. 
He asked the police to come right away to the church because he wanted to show them something. The priest stood in front of the parents, sent everyone home, and said he would wait for the police to arrive. But the parents tried one, last time to persuade the priest to call off the police. It almost seemed as if they were afraid for their own lives as well. They had a reputation to uphold in this town. All the neighbors had been so friendly to them since their daughter died. They didn't want to hurt all their feelings, but nothing would be the same if their neighbors found out what they were hiding. Then suddenly, Mary's parents locked the door. The priest's face turned pale. What were they going to do with him? Mary's parents looked at each other, almost like they were unsure of what to do next. The priest sat down in a chair. He felt like he couldn't breathe, he was having a panic attack. The parents couldn't help but feel sorry for the priest. After all, he was an old man, and they weren't bad people. They offered him some water, but when he wasn't paying attention, they slipped something into his drink. After that, the priest fell asleep and would wake up in a shocking place. Mary's parents dragged the priest to the room where Mary's coffin was. They put the priest in an empty coffin to hide him from assistance. Mary's father ran toward the car and jumped in. As they drove off, the priest came running through the back door. He screamed something at them, but they didn't care. They had to get as far away as possible. But when they drove around the corner of the street, they were greeted by something horrible. They heard the sirens of the police cars from a distance. They were coming straight at them. Mary's parents could now see the police cars driving up the streets toward them. They tried so hard to conceal their secret, but it was for nothing. It was over for them. The police officers took Mary's coffin back inside the church and wanted to talk to each parent alone. They started the interrogation pretty rough. The officers told Mary's parents they had to look inside the coffin, that was the only way to get the truth out. But when Andre went to get the coffin, he came back empty-handed. The coffin is gone, he said. He looked at his partner in disbelief. How is it possible? We were all in this room together. You could feel the tenseness in the air. What happened with Mary's coffin? Was there someone else involved? The officers handcuffed Mary's parents to the chairs. They walked out the door, wanting to investigate. But the church is massive, it has lots of different hallways and secret hideouts. The officers also don't have access to every part of the church, which makes this very tricky. They need to handle this with care. The coffin must be on the ground floor, you can't go downstairs with it. They decide to split up. Don went to the back of the church, and Andre to the front. He ordered everyone to stay inside and lock the front door. The people in the church started mumbling, they disagreed with what was happening, but they had no say in it. In the meantime, Buck discovered where the footsteps came from. He walked as silently as he could, gripping his gun on his belt. He wasn't going to use it, but he needed it for protection. He opened the door slightly, just enough to see what was happening on the other side. Someone was standing over Mary's coffin. Put your hands where I can see them, he shouted, and turned around slowly. The man over Mary's coffin put his hands in the air and turned around. Hello, Don, he said. Nice to see you again. Don couldn't believe his eyes, he dropped his gun and stood there confused for a second. When Andre came running down through the door, he heard Buck shouting. He yelled, his gun in his hands, and pointed at the man. Stand down, friend, Buck said. I know this man. Who are you, he asked the man. Buck and Andre noticed that Sam, their old partner, was holding something in his hand. They nodded at Buck to look at it too. Sam sprinted towards the door and tried to run through Buck and Andre, but they grabbed him by his arm and pushed him against the wall. You're going to tell us everything you know, Sam, Andre said in a demeaning tone. Sam knew it was over. Don and Andre took Sam to the room with Mary's parents. They expected to see surprised faces, but that wasn't the case. Mary's parents looked at Sam with disbelief. It almost looked like they were disappointed to see him. 
Jack was sitting across from Mary's parents. They looked defeated at each other, then they started talking to each other. Jack apologized to Mary's parents. Andre demanded an explanation. Sam started talking. It all started when I met Mary's parents at a parents' meeting. My daughter goes to the same school as Mary did. We became friends and confided in each other, Sam continued. I told them about a special operation I was working on. It was top secret, but I needed their help. I was tailing a notorious bank robber at the time and had to hide some evidence, Buck and Andre listened carefully. This was something they'd never dealt with before. It was never meant to go this way, Sam said remorsefully. Mary came over one day to play with my daughter. I wasn't paying attention, and then suddenly Mary was gone. Sam looked at Mary's parents. I thought you guys came over and picked her up, but when I saw the news the following day, I knew that wasn't true. I searched your house to find the evidence I gave you to hide, but then I couldn't find it. I knew you guys took it with you. Sam opened up his hand and revealed a disc with FBI written on the top with big letters. Mary's parents had hidden the evidence in Mary's coffin. They thought no one would ever be able to find it, but they were wrong. The Tennessee family, mourning the tragic loss of a six-month-old baby, was left reeling when they discovered his casket on the ground and floating in water days after he was supposed to be buried. Ashton Mackey died on May 13 after becoming extremely ill, a sudden passing that left his loved ones stunned. My heart is so heavy right now, I can't even begin to put it into words," his grandfather wrote on Facebook after the little boy's death. I know that God makes no mistakes and that God knows best right now, but I'm having a hard time with it," relatives gathered on May 20 to say goodbye to Ashton, first coming together at New Faith Bible Baptist Church and finally at New Park Cemetery's Babyland, where the infant, described in his obituary as a little angel, was to be buried. Ashton's family visited his grave on Monday to pay their respects but found the baby's heartbreakingly small white casket above ground in a dirty puddle of water, as shown in a video of the incident. This is what I came up here to see, a relative said in a Facebook live feed. The casket was supposed to be buried nine days earlier, loved ones said. Ashton's mother, Alicia Mackey, told InsideEdition.com that while she was not able to watch her son's casket be lowered into the ground, her uncle stayed for the actual burial. He watched them bury him, she said. Then I came on Monday, and his casket is upside down and floating in water on top of the ground. The sight left the young mother reeling. I was distraught, I was devastated, I was confused, Mackie, 25, said. I thought I was going to pass out. I didn't know what to think. Since it was such a small casket, Ashton's final resting place had only been lowered two feet into the ground, and inclement weather may have caused the disturbance, Mackie said. Officials with the cemetery told her it still shouldn't have come up, she said, explaining that her son is in a vault that's inside the casket, which should have added weight. Those at the cemetery at the time of the discovery echoed Mackie's sentiments, she said. A man there said he'd never seen anything like it. He said he'd been working there for 32 years, and he'd never seen anything like it. After finding Ashton's coffin appended, his family set out to put it back in the ground and redig his grave, Mackie said. The unexpected disturbance at her son's gravesite has left Mackie even more devastated. To see the casket again, it brought back bad memories, she said. I just want him to rest in peace. Mackie added, I haven't slept. I'm scared to go to sleep. I've already been dealing with the loss, but it's gotten worse. The Shelby County Health Department is reportedly investigating the incident. The New Park Cemetery has not responded to a request for comment by InsideEdition.com. This was the most terrible moment for this family. Rosa Isabel Sapid Scalaca was reportedly being buried on April 26 during a funeral procession in Peru. Mourners carrying her coffin heard a strange knocking sound from inside the coffin. It was Kalaka, who was actually alive and found to be gasping for air when the coffin was placed on the ground. She opened her eyes and was sweating. Juan Segundo Cajo, the caretaker of the cemetery, described the scene, 
I immediately went to my office and called the police. Metro UK reported that after Kalaka observed everyone at her own funeral, her family rushed her to referential hospital Ferrarent for care. Doctors had difficulty finding signs of life and immediately put her on life support until she died a few hours later. The family essentially had to say goodbye twice. Some family members believe that a coma may have been improperly diagnosed as death. We want to know why my niece reacted yesterday when we were taking her to be buried, an unnamed aunt of Kalaka reportedly told local media in Lumbea. We have the videos in which she pushes and touches the coffin. Her initial prognosis resulted from a car crash that occurred on Chicago Pisky Road in Lambayac on the northern coast of Peru. The crash took the life of Kalaka's brother-in-law and also resulted in serious injuries to three of her nephews, who were described as being in serious condition. Now the family wants answers, and Peruvian authorities have gotten involved to investigate, namely Nambiac Regional Hospital, the hospital where she was first treated following the car accident. Newsweek reached out to Lombayac Regional Hospital for comment. This isn't the first time someone has woken up after a death diagnosis in a bizarre incident. A 76-year-old woman who was believed to be dead came to life moments before she was to be cremated. As her family members prepared for her last rites at Mudhal village in Baramti, the woman, identified as Shukintala Gaikwad, had tested positive for cancer and COVID a few days prior. She was isolated at home, but her condition deteriorated due to old age, following which the family decided to move her to a hospital in Baramti. On May 10, the elderly woman was taken to Baramti in a private vehicle. The family tried to secure a hospital bed for her in Baramti but was unable to. As they waited in the car, the woman fell unconscious and stopped moving. The family assumed that the woman had died and informed their relatives about the last rites. They took her back home and started preparing for cremation. As the relatives mourned the loss, the woman was placed on her bier for her final journey. Suddenly, the woman started crying and then opened her eyes, shocking her family. They took her to a hospital, and policemen confirmed that the incident had taken place at Mudhal village in Baramti. Meanwhile, the woman was admitted to Silver Jubilee Hospital for further treatment, said the doctor and founder of Silver Jubilee Hospital.